You see this thing? This thing right here? This is the bane of my existence. And if you click on this video, chances are it's the same for you. Crispy brown leaves on my plants drive me absolutely nuts. And for those of you who don't know, one of the biggest causes of these crispy brown edges on your plant's leaves are actually chemicals leaching into the soil, being sucked up by the plant, and in turn burning the ends of your leaves. Now some plants are more susceptible to these chemicals than other ones, <clears throat> Calatheas, but also one of the biggest factors is just going to depend on where you live. Some people are just blessed with awesome tap water that comes right out of their faucet and doesn't have a high degree of minerals or contaminants in it that are going to cause these crispy brown leaves. Me, however, living here in Arizona, am not one of those people. You see, back in the golden days when I was living in upstate New York, our water was nice, it was crisp, it was fresh, it was right from Niagara Falls. I think that's where it came from. Maybe not. Don't listen to me. But anyway, it was completely normal there. I would drink water out of the faucet. I didn't have any problems with crispy brown leaves until I moved to Arizona. The first and the last time that I ever drank water out of the faucet was the day that I moved here. Not only does our water here taste bad to drink out of the faucet, but some of the faucets in my house that I don't use very frequently smell so strongly of chemicals when the water comes out of it, you would literally think it was coming out of a public pool. But enough beating around the bush. A couple days ago, I was scrolling through Amazon, and unsurprisingly, they recommended me a product that I really wanted. It was none other than the Aqua Crest water filter. And maybe you're thinking to yourself, well, Caitlin, I have a Brita, I've used it to water my plants, it has no impact. But this is not just any water filter. No, 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 my friends. This is a garden hose water filter specifically made for taking out the bad chemicals while leaving in the good chemicals for your plants. This bad boy right here costs $25.99, and it has a 4.5 star rating with almost a thousand views on it, so I really honestly have pretty high hopes for this thing. The thing is though, sometimes I find it really hard to tell when I make a change, like the type of water I'm using between filtered or bottled or right out of my faucet, if it's actually making a tangible difference. So what I also picked up on Amazon was this water pH testing kit. But not only does this test the pH of your water, it tests for 16 different it tests 16 different things. I'll put them over here. And basically what I want to do is a side-by-side -side comparison of how my basic tap water tests, how the bottled water I use for drinking tests, and finally how the AquaQuest performs in comparison to those other two. So if you're interested in finding out if this guy could be the solution to all of our plant problems, then keep on watching. We're going to get into it right now. Now before we get into it, I just wanted to do a quick little product review and what my overall initial thoughts are on the Aquacrest. For a little extra context, I'm a product manager by day, so I'm very comfortable with reviewing products, giving my feedback, and thinking of ways that different products can be improved. And I've got to say, my first thought out of the box is, wow, is this thing big. In case it hasn't been clear yet, this thing is going to hook up to your hose. For skin, this is about the size of a $5 foot long, although I don't think they're $5 anymore. It's big. It's big. And just thinking about my garden hose, it's kind of off the side of my house. It's very visible from the rest of my yard. And I'm not sure off the bat that I'm thrilled about this giant white tube just like hanging off off my hose. Now one important additional piece that is included in the box, which I think is really important, is that they give you this flexible connector that sits in between the hose spigot in the aqua cross. Why I think this piece is great is because with it being flexible, if you pull your hose too tight or if you accidentally bump into it, it's just going to bend this piece. It's not going to crack off your hose nozzle or anything crazy like that. But I wouldn't mind exploring what a slightly smaller option would look like. The next thing to note that while this isn't that expensive at $25.99, this does have a four month lifespan on it. So over the course of a year, you are looking at about $100 to clean up your water. So whether or not that's worth it to you is obviously a personal decision that you have to make, but do keep in mind that it's not just a one and done thing that you have to buy. You do have to purchase it over and over and over and over again if you like it. And lastly, one of the final concerns that I have with this product that to be honest for me might end up making it a deal breaker, at least for this time of year, is that its temperature rating is between 33 degrees and 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 4.6 degrees and 38 degrees for the rest of the world. The reason why this concerns me is, again, I live here in Arizona and in the summertime, which we are quickly approaching, it's not unusual for it to be in an excess of 110 degrees. Therefore, I'm not really sure what's gonna happen to my aqua cross filter if I decide to leave it outside. Is it just not gonna work as well? Is it going to completely disintegrate? What's gonna happen? Your guess is as good as mine. But at the end of the day, it is a pretty tight temperature range. And I don't know about you, but personally it drives me nuts to have to screw and unscrew different things in my hose. Like, sure, of course, I could take it off every time I'm gonna use it and then bring it back inside, but listen, I just want there to be an easy button. So. Aqua Crust Crew. If y'all could develop one of these that's good to like 130 degrees, 
that would be ideal. Now, two last important things to note that I probably should have said at the onset of this video. First of all, no way is this video sponsored by Aquacrost. I just happened to stumble upon them and was interested in trying this product out. But additionally, if you're somebody who doesn't have a garden hose like myself and I live in an apartment, don't fear. They sell a variety of different water filters for under the sink, for in your refrigerator. So from here, let's take a quick trip to my garden and go see how difficult and or easy this thing is to screw on. Okay, so in terms of installation, I'm giving the Aqua Crust a five out of five. As you can see here, I filmed this while I screwed it on with one hand and it was no problem. Additionally, I'll say that I really like that on the water filter itself, they put an arrow directing which way the water should flow through it so that there's no confusion on which side you attach to which side. Side thought, if you don't have one of these bendy hoses, 10 out of 10, I love this product. I would 100% recommend. And then one additional important thing to note is that once you install it, be sure to run the hose water through it for five minutes. I know this might look a little Little wasteful but I just sprayed down the rocks because I wasn't sure if there's any kind of weird chemicals or anything in it but you do want to initially cycle this when you first put it on. With the filter all set up it was time to get our water samples starting out with my ready refresh jug water. Next up I got some samples from the forbidden smelling faucet. From there we went out and got water from our freshly installed filter and last but not least water unfiltered from the hose which on the first attempt was an absolute disaster. Maybe you're wondering why I didn't just unscrew the filter and use the hose but once again I hate unscrewing things so we tried a different approach and it worked. Finally, you can see all my water samples sitting on the desk. I labeled them each so I didn't forget which one was which, and I did have three cups originally, but we had to consolidate down to one. And we're back. After that hose fiasco, I am literally soaking wet. Don't say it. Don't say it. That's what she said. <laughs> but anyway, we've got our four water samples here, and I am super excited to test them out. We have tap water, which came right out of my faucet. In fact, it came out of the faucet that I specifically mentioned earlier that has a really extra strong chlorine smell to it. So. Really curious to see how this one comes out. Next, we have the filtered water out of my Ready Refresh jugs. This video is also not sponsored by Ready Refresh, but hello, hi, if any of you guys would want to sponsor me, just hit me up. I'm willing to sell out at any point. Next, we have hose water without the aqua crust on, which maybe you're thinking to yourself is the same as tap water, but I swear to God, tap water and natural hose water are not the same thing. Also, this will be an unpopular opinion, but when I lived in New York and the water there wasn't disgusting, hose water was an absolute delicacy. It is delicious. And then finally, last but not least, we have the aqua crust water. A final thought about Aqua Crust. If y'all could change your company name for me, I have a very difficult time pronouncing it and I've had to make so many cuts in this video because of that. But anyway, let's get our testing going. Okay, so I had initially started out narrating this whole video as I was going with the testing. However, as I started doing it and I started reading through how to read the test strips, it became very clear that I was not going to be able to accurately measure these and narrate the video at the same time. So we're gonna do a quick voiceover. One additional problem that I had to remedy right from the start was that I initially started out with three individual cups for each type of water, and I was going to do three individual tests, but then I realized these were some long ass test strips and they were not gonna fit in those little tiny cups of water. So we took all of them and poured them into bigger cups of water that we could fit our test strips into. Okay, starting out with our tap water out of my nasty bathroom faucet. Our first measurement was total hardness. This one came out a little hard to say between a 120 and a 250. Iron was a zero, copper was a zero, lead was also a zero, nitrates were a zero, nitrites were a zero, MPS, hard to say again, but probably between a six and a ten. Total chlorine was a zero, fluoride was, well, they all kind of look the same if we're being honest, about a zero. Cyanuric acid, which I've never even heard of before, was about a zero. Like it was probably a zero, but maybe a little bit between a zero and a hundred. Either way, totally healthy. Quat, which I also don't know what it stands for, was about a zero, maybe a five, kind of somewhere in between there. As for alkalinity, on this one, we were sitting at about a 40, it looks like. Carbonates were between a 40 and an 80. And then finally, last but not least, our pH was between a 7.2 and a 7.6, I would say. Now at the end, I will show you a side by side with all the sticks, but from here, we're moving on to our filtered water sample. Additionally, I'm only gonna call out the things that were major changes from the previous sticks, because to be honest, most of them are pretty similar, which was quite interesting to see that this water that I thought was so much more special is basically the same as what's coming out of my tap. But anyway, two main differences that we had in this metric were first off hardness. It was a little bit less, sitting somewhere between 25 and a 50 compared to the tap water, which was sitting between a 120 and a 250. And then as for the pH, it looks like it was sitting at about a 6.8, which is slightly more acidic than usual. And in comparison to the tap water, that was between a 7.2 and a 7.6. From here, moving on to our hose sample, it was kind of what you would have expected. It was very similar to the tap water. It just seemed like it had a few more contaminants in it. Our total hardness was about the same, maybe with the hose water 
are just being a little harder. We are seeing a notable difference in the free chlorine inside the hose water as compared to the tap in the bottled water. MPS or microplastics looks like it's a little higher than the first two. Same with total chlorine. And additionally, its total alkalinity was a little bit higher. But aside from that, basically the same as the first two. But finally, that brings us into our last sample, and that is for the aqua crust. And if you started to get a little bored at these samples that all looked identical, well, it is time to wake up because we've got some exciting changes. And to be honest, I was pretty excited with the results. So first off, total hardness is the lowest out of every sample. It's basically sitting at zero, which was crazy to see that even in comparison to the bottled filtered water that I have delivered to my house, the aqua crust performed better. It had no traces of free chlorine, and appeared to be the lowest for total chlorine. Unlike the first two, its total alkalinity was around zero. It also had no carbonate. And finally, one of the most interesting was that the pH was significantly lower, sitting at about a 6.0, which to be honest, for water is pretty acidic. I just finished all the tests. I'm gonna put a side-by-side -side up on the screen right now. I'm actually in disbelief. As we were going water sample by water sample by water sample for the first three, they were almost all identical. And I was like, oh shit, these pH tests aren't working. I'm gonna have to order new ones. It's gonna be multiple days until they come in. Like, this isn't working out. And then we got to the aqua crust, and all of a sudden, there was a pretty dramatic change. But what I think is interesting about that pH and where it comes out to is it is marketed as a gardening filter. You think about things like berries, some of, um, I can never think of like what the classification is called, but like broccolis, cauliflowers, like all those types of like garden vegetables, they like a more acidic soil. So it makes sense that this water would come out a little more acidic, whether that was by design or not by design. But total hardness, to see that total hardness drop down to zero, like blew my mind. I knew this product had good reviews, but I didn't do like extensive research on it ahead of time before I bought it. So I'm just like really excited to see how well this works. Now, of course, me doing this with supplies that I got off of Amazon in my office out of deli cups probably isn't like the most scientific way that this can be done. But overall, it seems like the results on this guy are really, really positive. In wrapping up this test, based on what we've seen on this water testing kit, I would give this product two thumbs up and I am so excited to start using this on my plants. Because the gardening season is just starting and I'm excited to share this product with you guys, I'm going to publish this video now. But in a couple months after I have some experience using this guy in real time on my plants, I will absolutely do a video update. So if you're not subscribed already and you want to check out that video in the future, don't forget to hit the subscribe button now. And with that said, if any of you guys have hands-on experience with this product, please drop your experiences down in the comment section below so we can all learn from your experiences. And if you don't have one already, I will put the link for this product in the description. If you like more science-based videos like this one, then go check out my video on the science and styling of grow lights right here. And don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for sticking around until the end, and I hope to see you in the next one.